If you're just getting started on YouTube, there's a really big chance you're making one of these four mistakes I see people make all the time and I struggle with myself. In this video, I'm gonna break down the four biggest communication mistakes that YouTubers make when they're trying to connect with their audience and I'm gonna show you how to fix it. Welcome back to Creator People, where we're all about helping family-friendly creators and businesses grow their influence and income with integrity. I'm Brandon, and in this video, I'm breaking down the four biggest communication mistakes I see YouTubers make and how we can fix them. Notice, I didn't say how we can ameliorate the situation or the way in which we can enhance the quality, which are both things I might actually say in real life speech because I'm a weirdo, but that's not how most people talk. See, natural language is the biggest mistake I think people make when they're trying to communicate on YouTube. And one of the easiest ways to overcome that is to use contractions. I see this all the time. In your daily speech, when you talk to people, you say things like, I'm, we're, aren't, didn't, there. Nope, nope, there. You don't want around every day saying I am to everything or they are or did not. You just don't because we speak informally. And when you go on YouTube and act like a 19th century orator, which I know is not your intention and you probably don't even know you're doing it, it just comes across as fake to people. They don't like it. And even if they don't realize that, they tune out because of it. This happens to my wife all the time. She uses contractions when she speaks naturally. When she makes YouTube videos for her channel, she doesn't. She says, I am and we are not. And it's almost like when you get in front of a camera, you feel like you're in front of a formal audience, but you're not. This is YouTube. And on YouTube, people want to relate to you. Now, I would challenge you, if you don't think you do this, go check your YouTube videos. If you're not doing it, great, but a lot of people are. And there's a really easy way to help fix this. And that's just to actually plan out the things you're gonna say and planning something we're gonna talk about later. But just know this one thing, if you fix it, can totally change how much your videos connect with the people in your audience. So stick through to the end of the video where I'm gonna be helping you plan out your content in a way that it comes across more naturally. Another way we can come across not so naturally is the second point. It's not looking at the camera. Notice that right now I'm looking right at you, or at least it feels that way. But in real life, I'm not. I'm looking at the lens of a piece of plastic and glass and metal that's pointed at an angle past me. It's not even pointed at me. I'm just looking at this piece of glass, but it's like I'm talking to you. And this is where people make a big mistake. And I think the biggest place I see it is where people use their smartphones to record. That's not a bad thing. You can totally make great videos on a smartphone. The cameras are awesome these days, but people use the front facing camera. Don't do that. And they're watching themselves the whole time so it's like this. It's like I'm talking to you, but I'm not because I'm looking here. Flip your phone around, that'll solve that problem. You think, oh, well, I'm using a DSLR or a mirrorless camera like I'm using right here, so I don't have that problem. Well, that's not true either, because constantly I see people looking at the little flip out screen next to the camera to check themselves. And here's why we do this, either smartphone or an actual camera. It's because we're insecure. It's because we wanna make sure our hair is in place. It's because we wanna make sure our teeth have nothing stuck in them. It's because we wanna know that we're coming across the right way, but while we're thinking about our appearance, we're not living in the moment. When you're naturally talking to somebody, when you're in a conversation that's flowing really well, that you're both enjoying, you're not thinking about your appearance in that moment. In fact, you are in the back seat and you're thinking about the presence of that person and the discussion you're having. That's the way you've got to approach a YouTube video. Look into that lens and don't look away. So if you're shooting with a smartphone, turn it over, use the back camera. It's better camera anyway, that'll help a lot. And if you're on a mirrorless or DSLR camera, use that flip screen to check your framing and then put it back and don't look at it anymore. Just look into the void of the lens. Number three um, is and so those, that's number three, are these filler words we've all got. We've all got one of these things that we do when we're thinking of our next point to say. We don't do this in natural language either. We may say um or so and when they're appropriate or we kind of had a bit of a brain fart, but we don't use them in regular conversation that much. But when you're on video and you don't know the next points you're reaching or you know them and you're trying to figure out how to get from one to the other or remember how to hit it, you fill in the space because you feel like you need to. Actually, this is one where while you're working on it, you can still fix it. The number one way to fix this is through editing. I would encourage you go through your edits after you've shot and count how many times you say um. This is an exercise I had to do years ago in public speaking and it'll surprise you. You even get used to what they look like on the audio wave files when you're recording so that you can see them in the edit and know they're coming up and go, oh, did I um there? Yes, you probably did, but go through and cut them out. Now I would caution you, don't cut out the ones that make it feel natural, just the ones that take up space, the ones where you're thinking and just filling verbal airspace with your mouth. That'll help you with your finished product today. Long term, the thing that I've learned that's been a really big help is to just leave a pause. When I would normally say, um, it would be more like, and, and just freeze right there. You don't have to say anything because you can cut this out way easier if there's a space than if there's an um, an and or a so. So stop umming and sewing on people. 
And something that will help a lot with that is just planning. Even before I sat down to shoot this video, I had my points written out and I knew where I was going. Now I actually use our own Creator People Planner for all my videos, which is part of a course I've got coming up that will show you how to create an entire YouTube business. Make sure you're subscribed if you don't wanna miss that. But it helps you plan videos the same way I do. And I think it's both the easy and effective way. And starting today, I'm making that planner available to you guys as a standalone printable, along with our editing checklist over at creatorpeople.com. And I've got a whole method for planning out videos that actually maintains viewer retention as opposed to what most people do. And that video is free, so after you click subscribe, go ahead and click here to watch that.